and <laughs> we are live for the world to see i hope at least so i'm i'm just going to go with that we are i'm going to just go with that we're live vanessa so how about that? And Maxwell, I am just happy to see you again <laughs> at, for Wine Wednesday because it has been more than a minute. It has been many, many minutes, many moons, one yeah, might say. Been. This has been, this has been, <laughs> this, yeah, it has been, it's been a, a long minute. time. It's yeah. been a few minutes, but we're here. Um, hi, uh, in case you guys don't know, this is Vanessa Conlon. She's... Well, she's the best, um, obviously, but she is uh, a, a, a master of wine, guys. One of very few in the whole world. I was going to brag because you are very impressive, you know. Well, thank you. You're impressive. I'm, I'm happy to be back here and with your community, who I know loves wine, and um, hopefully they remember me, and if not, then... Uh, you know, we'll have fun today for the first time. So it's <laughs> great. <laughs> we're we're here, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I've been. I think we've both wanted to do this for so long, and yes, um, you know, like during the pandemic, it was very easy. You know, a couple of years ago, because we really had nothing to do, right? Um, but now it's crazy because we're we're busy. Like yeah. I, well, mean, I, I know we, we texted a, a number of times trying to figure out a new a date and then it would be like, well, I can't do this, this, and you couldn't do this, this. And we're like, well, that's like six months out now. Like, but look, we did it. Yeah. Did it. I mean, not, you know, not to mention you, you're, you're like, you've been all over the world. Like Vanessa is, Vanessa's <laughs> so fancy guys. You've been all over the, the planet. <laughs> Wait, where's the last place you just went? Where where did you just go? Uh, I think most recent international travel was Spain. It was the most recent, yeah. Right. Yes. But you you've been to you've been to what France and, and yeah. In the last since we've done one Wine Wednesday, I've been to France. I think a couple times. Um, England, um, yeah, and then just various places, you know, around here and there but you know good to be so back cool. it's so yeah cool. yeah so cool. i've been to florida <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you're always out and about because you know obviously i, I uh, follow you on the ig and i'm like yeah. wow he's yeah busy 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 yeah, but i've been to where have i been since i mean like i guess i've been to yeah Di i mean disney world that's the only reason i go to florida Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, but it's fine because I drink. I drink good things there, at least. Yeah, I'm using yeah. my time wisely. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't expect um, anything else. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, there are so many people here that I, I that are are saying hi. So like before we <gasps> before we actually begin, I just want to tell you like you'll remember so many of these names like like miniature Missy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I follow um, you on IG. Yes. There uh -huh. we go. <laughs> um, Ryan's here. Hey, Ryan. I love it. Dee Dee, Shauna, Janelle, Denise. I mean, so, oh my gosh, Tiffany. My mom. My mom's here. <gasps> mom. That's mom's awesome. Here. Hey, thanks for the super chat, Dee Dee. Um, we're happy to see you here. Uh, we are. We are here. Luke is here. Oh man. <laughs> um, all right. Let's. Um, I don't know. We're doing Wine Wednesday. We should probably We're doing Wine Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Wine. But yeah, and thanks for thanks okay. for telling me who's on because I I can't like you get to see that. I can't because I'm a guest. I can't see that. So it's really good to hear all those familiar names. Yes, and if you guys have any questions or whatever, just leave them there. I will get to them uh, as soon as I I yes. can. Uh, yes. So um like today we are we're 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 not drinking the exact same wine. Right. But we're drinking Wait, yes, there, there is a theme. We, we, there is a theme, which is sort of, okay, well, should we show them what the white wine is? So, so Maxwell has this Bordeaux Blanc, which is, as we'll discuss, Sauvignon Blanc based, but also has some Semillon in it, um, from France, from Bordeaux. Okay. And so 
in response, I decided to also open Sauvignon Blanc, but I'm opening one from the Loire Valley. So also France, but this is 100% Sauvignon Blanc from a little further north in, in France. And there's some other differences in how they're made too. So I thought it would be fun because we could kind of compare contrast. Got it. Um, and I'm using my Coravin uh, to, to pour this thing, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, this is not an ad, by the way. I just really like it. Uh. <laughs> oh, they're great. They're great gadgets. I just opened mine because I was too lazy to actually dust off my Coravin. But it's a, it's a great gadget, especially if you're not going to, if you just want like a glass um, yeah. or, yeah. So very, very good. So I'm going to just press that button and away you go. Is... I'm going to just patiently swirl. While I wait so that we can have a toast, because we can't start without toasting. No, we can. Okay. Uh, ooh, nice. Ooh. Okay, wow, that smells great. Yes. Well, here's to Wine Wednesday. We're Good back. back. Cheers. Cheers. We're back. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, woo, yes. Mm. Aromatic. So, mm. so, Sauvignon Blanc. I'm sure we've had some together in the past, but it's been it's been yeah. a minute. It's been a while. So, you know, Sauvignon Blanc is um, what I'd call international variety, meaning it grows all over the world, many, many different countries. Um, and it's an aromatic variety. Huh, so it sure is. Man, right? I did. Yeah, it just jumps like, out of the glass. Right. It, like this is one of those when you when you 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 pour it, it you, you're already like smelling it and yeah, so there's oh. there's there's a couple um, or a handful, let's say, of white varieties that that are sort of in the aromatic camp. And when I say that, I mean like if it's very quiet on the nose, you know, it could be sort of non-aromatic. Like you really have to work for it, or like semi-aromatic and then aromatic. Um, and so this is in that class of aromatic, exactly as you said. It's kind of talking to you right away. It's super expressive. And other other um, varieties like this are Gewürztraminer. Um, Torontes, which is a, a grape variety grown in Argentina primarily. Okay. Riesling can be very aromatic, but Sauvignon Blanc is just like, woo, like right off the bat. Uh, why, why, why? It's, it has to, has to do with the amount of aromatic compounds that's just naturally in that <laughs> grape variety. Um, it's not necessarily how it's made. So that's actually a really good question. Um, okay. it, it, it can be, because mine, for instance, which is why I chose it, is made a little bit differently than yours. So um, you're having a Bordeaux Blanc, so white wine from Bordeaux, because often, you know, when we t think about Bordeaux or talk about Bordeaux as a wine region, we think about red wines, um, but yeah. they actually make beautiful white wines as well, as well from Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, can have some Muscadel. I think yours just has um, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Um, and those two grape varieties, um, they sort of have this perfect harmonious balance together because Sauvignon Blanc as a variety, you probably noticed when you taste it, it's very, also very high in acidity. Yeah, it's hit me it really, okay. Yeah, right? Like it can make your yeah. mouth water. I, I never yeah. remember the name of that nerve, but there's like a nerve back here and it can like almost be like, whoo, and it hits that. Um, yes. So yes, and it can have this kind of, not just high acidity, but it has this texture to it. You know, I'm big into like palate, like shapes and feels. It has almost like a jagged acid to it. Um, and Semillon jagged tends acid. to, I love this. yeah, it has like a jagged acidity. Um, and Semillon, which is in your bottle, um, does nicely when blended with Sauvignon Blanc because it tends to have a more rounded texture to it. And people oh. can sometimes describe it as waxy in texture, uh. like beeswax. And it, um, it can have a more like lanolin, um, honeycomb type of aromatic. So blend them together it kind of softens the acidity of the Sauvignon Blanc okay. together yes okay so because very I, often gonna, blended. because I was gonna say like it uh, it does have a softer note to it as well and they're okay mm -hmm. so that's why well the, the, the Semillon Semillon exactly Doing um okay. and also your wine has was aged in some oak and part of it was new and so that's also going to impart some things that my wine doesn't have because my wine was not aged in any new oak. Um, so if you're tasting or smelling any kind of that sort of sweet spice, I don't mean sweet, like there's no sugar, but just like, you know, those baking spices that you would use in like a sweet dish, like cloves, yeah. cinnamon, vanilla, 
probably present in your glass. And the other thing that that um, has done to your wine, and I say this because I've had the wine that you're having before, is, and I know it was an oak, is oak can add a textural breadth on the palate too, you know, because the wine actually breathes a little bit um, through the grains of the wood as it as it ages. And so it can it can kind of just just add this sort of um feeling of of yeah, like broadness. Whereas uh. my wine is a hundred percent Sauvignon Blanc. So I'll just show it again. So this is Puy Fume. So this is from the Loire Valley in France. The Loire Valley is is beautiful. They call it the Garden of France. It's this long sort of sprawling region with lots of like castles and hills and and very mm. well known for Sauvignon Blanc. If you've ever had Sancerre, Sancerre mm. is Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley. Puy Fume is also Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley. So they don't make it easy for you because they don't say Sauvignon Blanc. No. They just, they put the region and you're right. expected to know that if it's a white wine and it says Puy Fume, it is going to be 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Why so do they all, make? Why do they do that to 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 us? I mean, I, you know, you know, back in the day when when um, people were making wine, let's say in this region, because this wine is, I mean, this region is hundreds and hundreds of, of years old, right? There yeah. there weren't as many wine growing regions. Okay, you know, like the United States was like not even making wine, right? When when this village was said, "Look, we're going to make Sauvignon Blanc because it grows well, well here," so. So a lot of it is just historic, not to be annoying, but it can be when you're, especially when you're first learning about wine, you're like, oh, it's so much to remember. But actually, once you kind of start to break it down. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, it just goes back to, because that's, it's just sold and that's what they. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they did. They would name yeah. the, they would name the wine after the region or the village, basically where it was, where it was grown. And then you're expect, just expected to know that's what they grow there. So, so my wine again, has no Simeon in it and um, no new oak. So what I'm getting is a very, I am getting definitely that very like, that jagged sort of very linear acidity to it, very mouthwatering, very crisp. And I'm really just getting all fruit. There's no oak on this wine. So there's nothing uh, else kind of in the glass, you know, talking to me. It's just this like this variety and the place. Interesting. Okay. Whereas I, I'm definitely getting the oak for sure because that's doing something to this where I'm getting like a, a I don't know it's just a very long mm -hmm. very long finish but I'm 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 getting like I can't do this as good as you but you've taught me well so okay. there's there's there is some baking mm, like mm -hmm. mm, There, I don't know if this is weird, but there's almost a vanilla yes. that is happening. Hundred percent, not weird, not weird at all. Because, um, so when oak barrels, <laughs> not weird. You know, many wines in the world are aged in oak. And some is French, some can be American oak. There's Hungarian oak, there's Slovenian oak. But, um, but when a barrel is made, they literally have to like bend the staves. Right. If you picture an, an oak, if you pick it like this, right? Yeah. So what they do is they actually have to heat it up over like flames, <laughs> and then they bend the staves, wow. and then they put these like hoops on them, these you know like metal hoops to hold them in place, and then it seals up. Um, but what happens when they when they toast it? One is they it, it's heated because they have to bend it, but also you can as a wine maker, you can actually almost like order what you want. Like I want light toast, medium toast, heavy toast. And the more it, the barrel is toasted, the more impact the oak is going to have aromatically and on your palate. And vanillin is something that happens when, just like in vanilla, like in a vanilla bean, it's a compound that comes out in this process. So you can absolutely smell and taste things like vanilla, even though there's no vanilla, no, no vanilla in this wine. But there, it but just there's, yeah there's something yeah conjures yeah so but but also yeah like those other those other spices like clove um nutmeg sometimes i get or even like mocha you can get mocha sometimes especially on like heavily toasted barrels so yeah heavily toasted this is okay okay mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> i love it yes yeah Man. this is okay 
So, you know, I, I knew there was something here that was like, yeah. You, 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 my friend, have, have, uh, you're exactly as I remember you, which is you are actually great at sort of picking out these different things in the glass. So that was, that was not a weird question at all. That was very apt question. So, yeah, it was apt. Yes. It was very apt. Yeah. Like <clears throat> it was fun to do because I just went to um, Paso Robles right. and um, so we were, you know, wine tasting there and it was yeah. really fun to actually kind of just do everything that we did together. Um, and I, I, it was, I, I was, I was always just like, all right, let me see if I could get this, you know, mm -hmm. and I would ask, I would ask, you know, the, um, whoever our host was and they would be like, yeah, 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 that's, that's good. Or, uh, well, yeah, but, but it's just, <clears throat> I guess the, there's also what I've learned too, is that there really aren't any wrong answers per se, mm -hmm. or, right. like, you know, yeah. Um, but I have learned, um, I have learned that you can sort of based on um, the color or based on a certain mm -hmm. smell that you can mm -hmm. automatically just be like, oh, well, that is a, what a yeah. That's right. That, that's exactly right. Because <laughs> yes, there, there are many things about wine tasting that are subjective and um, and you know, you might get raspberry and I get strawberry and it's like, well, we're both right. You know, it doesn't matter. But, um, but to your point, there are certain characteristics of different grape varieties that can tell you that are kind of universal, you know, like Sauvignon Blanc, I think like we can probably agree. There's a lot of citrus. Yeah. Right. It's always very highly this, citrus. Yeah. Like this is, this is like lemon, uh, pineapple uh Grape, like grapefruit grapefruit yeah yes. this is mm -hmm. yeah for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and so so anyway but so yes if you really want to nerd out you can like learn those things and then when you just even put your nose in the glass or you taste it and you don't know what it is you can already be thinking oh, i think i might know what this is because it's got x y and z yeah i'd love it see this yes. is this is great um i'm gonna just look at the 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 comments here for a second so i can yes. See if there's any. Um, hey, thanks, Michelle Phoenix. She said Hakuna Moscato. It means <laughs> drink wine. <laughs> like Michelle, Michelle coming in with the joke. <laughs> thanks, Michelle. Um, hey, Zara, what's up? Hey, Miniature Missy said I'm starting a rock band called Jagged Acid. See, I, th this is a, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, hi, Zara. I like that. Way. Uh, Rosemary is going to be backup vocals on the groups on this great. Um, uh, hey Disney Mama. Uh, <clears throat> oh man, this is this is wild. Hi RJ. Uh, Ryan said Sun Sarah for the win. Um, uh, oh yeah, Didi said Max always ignores the chat during wine wins. That yeah, so, sorry. I'm too <laughs> look look. I'm too focused on like the learning and I you know. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Vanessa uh, Leilani said yes. Vanessa and her iconic wine corner and that fabulous lamp. <laughs> yes, but the the lamp, the lamp is very special. The lamp is very special. So the lamp is a magnum bottle of champagne um, that actually my husband made himself. It's so cool. Yeah. So he made a lamp. He made a lamp. Yeah. So this he took a magnum bottle um obviously the champagne was consumed first and <laughs> yeah and then like a fixed you know like a whatever light bulb thing and then found like this thing which kind of looks like bubbles and then did that and there we have it i don't make lamps I, as you can tell i'm like he's like i i i kind i i love it <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Uh, it's like great. it's gonna fall down. Yes. No, it's, it's, okay. We love, we love the lamp. Yeah, okay. It's good. Again. Yes. Okay. I, I'll, I'll um, fix it later. <laughs> all right. Well, we love the lamp. Tell your husband. Good. Good. Good job. We'll yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, and what else is going on here? Ryan said, "Sorry, Ryan. What do you say? So you can always pick out wines, ages in." American oak because of the dill? Yes, he's right, actually. So a characteristic of American oak is, is dill. Like that is a marker. Like if I was blind tasting, you know, um, and I picked up dill, it would, dill coconut 
is often something that tells you it's been an American oak. Fun fact. Whoa. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Ryan, <clears throat> Ryan's drinking um, a sparkling wine from England, actually. Yes, they are making some fantastic um, sparkling wines there, traditional method sparkling wines. I've actually yep. had some um, at uh, this place, Wine Bar George, mm. mm -hmm. um, which is the the wine bar in uh, Disney. Yeah. So he 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 was like, uh, it, it was, uh, he was there. The, the 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 last time I went there, he was there, and he was like, "All right, Mr. Cheesy Pop, you need to try this." And he was he was just like ready. He was like, "This is what you need to try today," and it was. English sparkling wine and yeah I mean incredible every bit as good as I mean like, yeah really well it's stuff. it's cool, cool very cool climate you know similar to champagne they sometimes in some cases have sort of similar chalky type soils and um yeah and actually uh, many champagne houses famous ones are investing in England. I think Rotorer, I want to say, made a big investment there. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, and and for a long time, not a long time, but for, for a while, or you still hear this, people call it English fizz, but they're trying to get away from that because it belies how actually great the wines are. It, English yeah, fizz. It's fizzy, but it's very well-made quality wine. But yeah, people call it English fizz. Okay, well, it is very good. I've had it. It was really, really great stuff. Is it, um, does it cost less? Like, um, or is it? Just, no, uh, not really. <laughs> they're, they're doing the same thing. Okay. No. Yeah, it's, it's, they tend to be, you know, in the, I don't know, what have I bought? 30, $40 range and up. Okay. Um, cause, cause it's still, it's still expensive. You know, it's still a big investment in aging and, and all the things they do in traditional method riddling and, you know, okay. two fermentations in the bottle and aging in the bottle. It's still a, Fairly. Going on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, oh, hey, Robert Emery's here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cheers. Cheers, cheers Robert. Robert's yeah. my husband, by the way, everybody. He made the lamp. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hi. Yeah. He's also like a major wine geek. So if you see him, like, well, he's a wine professional and a geek, but that's okay. Um, so if you see him chiming in in the chat, you know you're like going to get some good info because. He knows his stuff. Anything else? The, he, well, he he talked about the wine, the the uh, the 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 wine bottle lamp. So you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, he said they're not hard to make. Oh, well, maybe next time we'll do a lamp making tutorial on Wine Wednesday. How's I that? Think, I think that that a lamp making tutorial. Wait, would anyone like to see this? This is great. <laughs> can we can we get a lamp making tutorial? What does he say? He's, yeah, he's... I, I, yeah, he's down. He's down. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> but yeah. everyone has to first go buy a magnum of champagne and drink it. Who so has a problem? Wait, so who, would have a, who would have a problem with that? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> you have to be ready. You have to be ready with your, your magnum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. All um, right. Great. Thanks, Robert. Uh, Oh, by the way, Dee Dee, uh, thanks Dee Dee. She said, Loki is so happy for this Wine Wednesday. Loki's her cat. And <gasps> yeah, Vanessa, mm -hmm. is, there, is, there, are, are there, is there a cat? Yes, the yes. Right now? What's going my, on? Yeah. My, she's, she's within, I can see her. So Ava, she's, she's a black cat. She's named after Ava Gardner, very famous Love it. actress um, of yesteryears, who is very, you know, beautiful and dark and mysterious and sort of elusive. And that's exactly what my cat is like, except for when I get on Zoom, in which case she's like, ah. um, but yeah, surprisingly, she's she's fairly well behaved at right. this moment. At this at moment. This maybe, moment. I maybe, cannot promise. Maybe she will make an appearance. We, we do not know yet. Yes. Um, yep. uh, everyone's very active tonight in the chat here. I'm like, you people, I can't keep up with you people tonight. So but Justin, hey Justin, hello from Mid Thunderstorm in the Magic Kingdom. Oh yeah, awesome, oh, that's fun. Okay, we love it. Wine, art, Wednesday, I can't keep up with you guys. So I'm just gonna 
you know. Although, Ryan has a fun fact that mm. he was on a flight to the UK with Russell, uh, who? Russell Bevan and Heidi Bevan from Adversity Sellers? Yes, I know them very well, yes. Vanessa knows them very well. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just saw them like, like two weeks ago. Yeah, oh, you just I saw them too. This is yeah. so casual. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> but, but this is great. This is great. Because well, I, when I was in, in Paso Robles, I texted Vanessa and I was just like, oh, hey, I'm at this wine. Uh, I'm at blah, blah, blah. I'm trying this wine I've never heard of before. And she's like, Oh yeah, that's from Uruguay. Oh, oh also, um, say hi to blah blah blah. Who is there? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, it's just the wine world becomes smaller all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be in that. I want to be in the wine world. I guess I kind of am. You, know, I think you fully are. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you talk about wine all the time. Yeah. I think I think that counts. I fully right, think that fine. counts. All right, fine. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm in. I'm in. Um, cool. All right. Do we go to the, the next one? What are we doing? Next I was going to ask. Is it time for a little red? Yeah. Okay. So, sort of similar. We we there is a theme. There is a theme here, but we have different wines. So, do you want Maxwell? Do you want to show it? Here we go. Great. Three Wine Company. Um, that's the Old Vines Field Blend from Contra Costa County. So um, I also have an old wine, old vine wine from Contra Costa County. This is called Once in Future. Now this is mostly Zinfandel. Yours has Zinfandel, but it also has I think some Mataro and Kirinyan and maybe something else. But um, so this this is. Zinfandel or mostly Zinfandel, but I thought it'd be fun because it's the same region and both old vines because I thought that could be fun to also talk about what that means. Yes. I love talking about old vines. Yes. So, so Three Wine Company, um, they're great. They're, they're kind of a favorite wine uh, where I work, Wine Access. Our members love those wines from, from Three Wine company and then once in future the one that i have so this is this is one that i only actually got to know pretty recently okay. but it has a, a really cool story so if you, um so zinfandel <clears throat> is the grape in this bottle and a large part of what you're drinking um zinfandel as a variety was um sort of like california's grape like mm -hmm. we we embraced it we sort of owned it and said this is this is our variety um, now, tr in truth, through DNA profiling, because I actually can DNA profile grapes, mm -hmm. just like, yeah. Um, yeah, we actually realized that it's genetically related to um, uh, tribidrag, tribid tribid which is from Croatia, and also genetically related to Primitivo, which is grown primarily in Italy, like in places like Puglia, uh, towards the south. So it wasn't really ours, but it's sort of it, like we, we owned it. We took it, we made it ours, and um, that's what we're both drinking. But this one was made by a gentleman named Joel Peterson. Now, have you ever heard of Ravenswood? Yeah. The wine? Ravenswood, yeah, pretty yeah. well-known brand. Yeah. So he actually founded Ravenswood. And this was, oh gosh, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, okay. something like that. Um, and he is really almost single-handedly responsible for putting Red Zinfandel on the map, for making it popular. He built Ravenswood into the number one selling Red Zinfandel in the world. And then the company was bought. So Ravenswood was purchased by a large corporation. And he you know, stayed on for a number of years. So I'm sure it was like contractually obligated. And then he also was then contractually obligated not to make Zinfandel. For a certain number of years is like a non-compete yeah okay but this is his so this is his little tiny project called once in future so like you know sort of looking to the past but now here he is and so this is his own wine called, called once in future which that's is really film. neat that's really yeah neat. yeah oh, how cool is that it's raven's so, yeah. They're, they're yeah big right 
Cheers, by the way. Yeah, cheers, cheers, yeah. Cheers. New wine. We have to toast. Ooh, this smells great. Just. <laughs> Ooh, that's juicy. Yes. So. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Zinfandel tends to, and again, I know you have other great varieties in yours mixed in, but um, tends to, yeah, we kind of like juicy, very, um, can be very fruit forward. So I always get a lot of like boysenberry, blueberry, boysenberry on it. It's a great variety that can yeah. take on oak very prominently as well. This, um, yes. Yeah. Rich, just rich red fruit. Just, yeah. Like oh, yeah. it's, it's like your barbecue wine. Like yeah. you want it to just be able to stand up to like, and, yeah. And I'm having barbecue chicken tonight. Look at us. Almost like we gave this some thought. I did. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was like old vines. Yeah. yeah. Old vines blend. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's yes. what, what, what is an old vine? What, like, what? So it's, yeah. yeah, it's a great question. So, so the thing is, and you'll see this on labels, we'll say like old vine, or in France, sometimes it says VA vine, same thing, that means old vine. Um, now, the thing is, it's actually not like a legally regulated term. So there's nothing anywhere written that says to call it old vine, it has to be 20 years or older or 40 years or anything. So in a way, you can kind of say that no matter how old your vines are, but both of our bottles have vines that are about 120 years old. Whoa. Yeah. So it's pretty cool because that's that's rare for a number of reasons. So grape vines can live a long time, but there are many reasons why they might get either pulled out or replaced with another vine. So one is just honestly, there are lots of diseases that can affect vines. So sometimes they get, you know, they get sick, they get old, they're not producing as much wine as much as it's romantic is also a business, right? And so if you're if you're a vintner, if you own a vineyard and you have vines that aren't producing anymore, you might re replace them mm -hmm. with something else. In some cases, maybe you want to have a different grape variety there. So, you know, maybe you planted Merlot and then you're like, oh, Merlot isn't as popular anymore. I'm going to I'm going to plant Cabernet Sauvignon and replant. So maybe you decided as a decision just because you want to you want to plant something different. I right. mean, in some in some cases, maybe you just want to replant the whole vineyard because we've learned a lot like things like, you know, the 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 your rows, like if you picture these rows of vines, like if you're driving up and down, you know, you're in Paso or, or Napa. We've learned a lot about what how a vine can do best in terms of the aspect to the sun, the way that the sun rises and sets over the vines. Anyway any any number of reasons so maybe they want to put it at a different angle because they're like actually our grapes are going to ripen more evenly if we change the road direction so and these are just a couple things reasons why yeah. someone might replant um and again just to go back to economics old vines the older a vine gets the less fruit it produces so it's commonly thought or you know you can taste in the glass that that it's less fruit but can be sort of more concentrated or more complex but again it's we, we still have to remember that wine is a business right so if you have a lot of old vines and all of a sudden you're bottling half as much wine as you used to because your vines are getting older as a business person you might make the decision uh. hey i need to replant i need to have more wine i need to have more bottles in the market so okay. to have a vine that is 120 years old yeah. is really really rare really rare in fact the vines that are in your bottle and my bottle are commonly thought to be some of the oldest vines not just in the united states but in the world that are on their own roots whoa pretty, pretty cool right <clears throat> um okay so i've noticed that with old vines they <clears throat> this, this is the type of wine that they produce the the zinfandel so mm -hmm uh why so a couple of reasons some are literally um a, a big portion of that actually there are literally people like matt klein who made your wine and owns three wine company like uh joel peterson and his son morgan queen peterson who have basically made it their life's work to save these old vineyards because a lot of these vines here that were planted here in california 
you know, you, like there are a lot of these over in sort of Dry Creek, let's say in Sonoma County, or these are bottles from Contra Costa County that um, that were planted by immigrants. That these people, you know, they, they came over, it's like this little piece of history and they have just made it their, you know, they're determined to, to save these. So it's, in many cases, it's really people, it's individual people who have said, I'm going to save this because it's like it's part of the sort of the tapestry of American wine history. And Morgan, who's Joel's son, um, he runs a vineyard called Bedrock that they they did that. They were they were like, we never really want to own a vineyard in Sonoma. It's not what we do. And then almost like in protest, they heard that this old vineyard, Bedrock Vineyard, was going to get purchased by someone who wanted to rip it all out and plant Cabernet Sauvignon. And so they bought it because they were like, we can't. We can't let that wow. happen. Just okay. yeah. Wow. So yeah. So um, so that's 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 a major um, reason. Some of it though also is where it's planted. Okay. And, which makes it possible. So bear with me for just a second. But the reason why a lot of vines died over time or or were replanted. This is a, we could talk about this for like days. So I'm going to do like a cliff note version. But then I'm happy to answer questions or whatever. But there's a there's um. A basically a pest that's, <clears throat> that attacks the roots of vines called phylloxera. Phylloxera, I remember this. Yes, yes. So, yes, phylloxera. So, so phylloxera, you know, um, it started attacking vines around the world. It like decimated, you know, France. I mean, these poor vintners out there, they thought they were just done forever because nobody knew how to combat this. They were like flooding the vineyards trying to they didn't know what to do, right? Um, and how all these, all these, like, they would try anything, but their vines were dying. It's traveled down to Spain. We've had it here in California. Um, and so basically the most common way, which what almost everybody does now, almost everybody who makes wine in the world does now, is we, you can graft a vine onto rootstock and it will grow. So you can take a rootstock that isn't, that this vine didn't grow on, you can graft it and you can plant it in the ground and it will grow. So there are rootstocks that are resistant to phylloxera and other and Whoa. other pests and other things. Some things are, are better suited towards drought or other right. pests like nematodes or, you know, name it. So, so this is what the vast majority of people do you know is you literally choose your rootstock based on what your soil type is and what pests are common in the area you know you plant your vine and you and then and then it goes in the ground now one thing which is crazy because this this little pest almost destroyed wine around the world one thing that it is not able to survive in are sandy soils okay. for whatever reason that was like what's it, is it like crypt, kryptonite no what's this? anyway um so sure. yeah yeah that's it is that, am i using it okay it's been a long, it's been a long time since it. anyway so so it, 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 can, it can it 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 can't really um do its damage in sandy soils and yeah. contra costa county where your vines grow in your bottle that you're drinking and the vines that i am drinking in this bottle are planted in sandy soils hey so, oh yeah phylloxera proof yes yes so and it's crazy because if you walk these vineyards, it literally looks like a sand dune. It's what? it's not what you're used to seeing. Yeah, and they're they're own rooted, meaning that they also um, they're not trained on these. You know, if you if you if you're driving, like as I mentioned, you're in Paso. I'm sure you saw this everywhere. You drive through a lot of wine regions to see these perfectly kind of straight rows, right? Yeah. That are very manicured like this. And that's really to ease um, harvest and the things that you would do in the vineyard, like you need to go through, you need to prune, you know, or maybe you need to spray for something or, you know, yeah. all these things so you can drive a tractor if you have a tractor. So, and then it, you, you're able to actually train the, the foliage up onto wires. Hmm. And so you can do this to maximize sunlight and photosynthesis. Uh, so, you know, you, you're, you're seeing these sort of very sort of controlled plantings. And this is the opposite. These are like all over the place. You'll see one that's like this big and one that's massive. And it's like sprawling branches everywhere. And wow. it's almost like every vine is almost like its own little art, like sculpture. They're very different, which means you can't, you have to do everything by hand. You can't oh. recognize. Yeah. 
So anyway, so it's own rooted and they're like just these crazy old gnarled looking things that are just honestly beautiful. <laughs> they're really beautiful. <clears throat> okay, this is so cool. But this, and this is pretty local. I mean, this is yeah, Contra, Contra Costa. So that's it's kind of southeast of where I am in Napa. Of you, yeah. That's but so southeast of you. So, so we're from, in San Francisco. So it's like e east. Wait a minute, we're we doing that. Right? Yeah, it's like close. east of east of yes. San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and more inland, exactly. Right. So so for me, it's like maybe an hour drive, something like that. Hour yeah. Hour ish, hour fifteen. So not too far. But very different, very different soil types, you know, as, as we're seeing in this. In this That's class. really, really interesting. Like, I, I mean, I, I for sure have never seen anything like that. Well, field trip. Yeah, field trip. Tiffany we'll said it's it. close to her. Oh, Is well. Yeah. Uh, t Tiffany, easy field trip for you then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. That's really interesting. I, I mean, I mean I've n I never even thought about that. Sandy. Sandy soil. What, what? Yeah. Never think of it. I should look at the comments, guys. I should, right? Um, yes, Michelle, I am having a grape time indeed. <laughs> uh, there was a question somewhere. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry. Oh, Janelle said, have you ever had to taste a wine you didn't like? Oh, oh yes. No. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there, I'm sure there's been many. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, for sure. You, you one that like stands out? Um, gosh, you know, I'm, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to name names, but yeah, I, I, there, yeah, there were, there were um, plenty of wines, for instance, when I was studying, let's say, to, for the master of wine exam where I had to be able to blind taste wines when you pick up a glass and just figure out what it is. Where is it from? How old is it? How is it made? What's variety? You know, what's region? What's quality level? All that stuff. And, um, and yeah, there were plenty of wines that I was like, this is not what mm -hmm. I would choose to just open on a Tuesday night. But like, I need to know, I need to, I have to know this. So on a Tuesday yeah. night, on a Tuesday night. Or a Wednesday, or a, but but I think on Wine Wednesday we usually open things we really like, so yeah. it wouldn't ha it wouldn't happen on a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, do we, are both our outfits match? Yes, I guess. Yes, Shauna, I guess. Kind of do. Yeah, you and my need... cat also. My cat is all black, so she's oh, okay. matching as well. You just so. need some shrimp on yours. I guess shrimp. Uh... And are, is that like a margarita glass? With the it's lime like on a. It? I think it's. I think it's a. Or a martini? I think it's a martini with, uh, with a, you know, with, I think it's a, with a twist. I think it's a lemon. Yeah, I think we got a martini with a twist here. I approve. I, I do like a good martini. Do you like a martini with a twist or olives? I prefer olive, but not dirty. Yeah. So I do. Yeah, no. So I do bone, bone dry. So actually like little to no vermouth. Yes. Olive, not dirty. I, that's we have drink. the we have the same martini order. <laughs> See, I guess this is and this is why we need to do this more often because we discover things like this. Yes, so we have the same martini order. This is fantastic. So you're a vodka mm -hmm. martini. I am. Yes, I am too. It's mm -hmm. really funny because like uh, because like Ali's a gin martini. Mm -hmm. I'm a vodka martini. So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, for me, I think like also because I do, I taste so much wine that for a cocktail, I just want it like really like clean, just pure, you know, that's, that's what I like. Yep. Yes. It's just like, I, yes, mm -hmm. I feel it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got, I got seriously schooled at a bar in San Francisco called Absinthe, which has a great cocktail program. So I don't hold this against them. Absinthe. But they, they did, they, they gave me a talking to because I was like, I would like a vodka martini up with olives completely dry. And they were like, ma'am, that is not a martini. Like it is not a martini if there's no vermouth. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh. Yes, but it's okay. I wasn't, I, I, I still call it a martini. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's not a martini, mm -hmm. it's no vermouth, yeah. No. But I was like, I want it in the glass. I want it in the martini glass, so what do I say? So I'm cold vodka in a 
fancy glasses. Like, what's my, that doesn't sound very, like, a great order. No. Cold vodka, I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is that? I don't think, yeah, I don't think Frank Sinatra in, in, in like Palm Springs when he was out there just chilling was like, ah, I'd like a cold vodka and a fancy glass. <laughs> it doesn't, does not have the same ring to it at all. No. No. <laughs> there is a martini in I was looking I went to Palm Springs for my birthday this year and I didn't get to try it but there is there's there's this place that has a hundred dollar martini and I was like hmm. what are what they using? Yeah, what are they using yeah. I did I didn't try it because you know a hundred but you know but yeah but see, oh, Janelle said she had the Carthay Martini last week, and it was really good. The Carthay Martini, yeah, that's a great martini. Like, if, if Vanessa, if you came to Disneyland, yes, that's where I would take you. Okay. We, we would go to Carthay Circle. We'd get the Carthay Martini because they they know they know how to do it. Double cross vodka um, is what they use. So it's it's yeah yeah no it's perfect, and they do blue cheese olives. Um, oh yeah. I do enjoy a blue cheese oh. Yeah, when yeah, available. Yeah, yeah. Those so are that's nice. perfect. Yeah, yeah. No, mm -hmm. that's perfect. I'm glad you tried that, Janelle. That's really good. Um, we we just I don't know how we got here. We went to we went to Martinis. Oh, because of my shirt. Your shirt. Yes. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's fine. But yeah. it's, it's great. Okay, but we're having wine. It's having okay. wine. We're having wine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is great. Um, What's um what's going on with you? What's going on at Wine Access? Things are good. Um, yeah. yeah, things are good. We've been really busy. We have um you know we have a number of partnerships for, that we uh, we have like well wine I was just film, filming the wine folly stuff earlier this week. So we have we we have a, a club um with wine folly and we have a um, partnership with the Michelin Guide. So that's fun. So I get to like. Yeah do cool stuff with Michelin. It's really, it's very, it's very, it's actually, um, I've been fortunate enough. I've been able to be present for a couple of the Michelin star reveals where they're, and it's just, it's so just, I, I can't even put into words. It's like such an honor to watch this happen. You just see these people who have worked so hard, wow. you know? Um, anyway, so that's been going on, um, which is oh, fun. Cool. And then um, I mentioned to you just a little bit before we before we went live here, but I'm going to the country of Georgia in August. I feel like every time I say that, I have to say the country of because you do because right. Yeah, uh, I love I would love the state of Georgia too, but um, but I'm going to the country of Georgia in August on a wine kind of knowledge discovery trip because and we should we should talk we should do one after we can talk about it, but it was it is up for debate whether Georgia or Armenia was the first wine producing country or nation. Um, and, but so regardless, like we could argue about that all day, we're never going to figure it out, but it is ancient <laughs> wine, history, ancient wine history there. Ancient. So wow. um, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. You're going, I, yeah. You're going to Georgia. Yeah. And we'll when see. You, you, you're going on a wine trip to Georgia, yes where you will like what do you yes. do on a wine trip to Georgia? you just be like drinking wine yeah. and learning about uh, like uh, okay so this is i mean this is amazing so i didn't even know i did not know that there was a debate that georgia and armenia armenia uh, were having mm -hmm. this is like yes. okay. yeah yeah yeah, so I'll go I'll, like tour vineyards and meet with winemakers and talk about what their history and what they're doing and taste a bunch of wines and then come back and, you know, talk to cool people like you about it. I'm a cool person that you want to talk to about. Your whole community is so cool. Pretty cool. That's really great. Wow, thanks. Yes. Uh, yeah. Georgia, okay, how old are those vines? Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> I mean, we're talking, geez, like... I can't even do that math in my head. Centuries, but surely they've been replanted. Over, yeah. yeah. I mean, they've been replanted over time. So, but, you know, we're talking like... I don't even know. Let's ask Robert, how old are those? How old are... Yeah, because when... Yeah, because when was wine... Like, who? Where, okay, we don't well, know. It right? was... 
yeah, and they were like making it in amphoras. This is way before any type of like modern winemaking, but you know, like grapes will ferment like by themselves, right? So it was probably discovered by accident. Like someone left some grapes out and they started fermenting and they were like, let me drink this. And they were like, wow, I feel kind of like loose. <laughs> What's going on? Um, but yeah, I mean like no wine, like those original wines were nothing like what we would know and drink today, you know? So, so they've definitely like, made big investments into what they're producing right. now but that's that's what it was like you know that's how it all got started but somebody back in who knows how long ago in either armenia or georgia mm -hmm. did yeah like built the first they they have sort of the first known winemaking facilities that was like you know uncovered and like archaeological digs and stuff but they realized oh this was a winery wow yeah that's, so I will, I will be able to speak to this <laughs> much better. That's really cool. After, after the trip, why don't why don't we talk about it then? While I actually I, will be able to impart some some genuine knowledge. All right. Cool. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I yes, I can't wait to hear what Geor Georgian wine tastes like. Like that's Georgian wine. Georgian yeah. wine. Um, uh, let me just look here. Oh, hey Michelle, you keep doing grape things. Michelle's got the jokes, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, Ryan, hey Ryan, thanks, buddy. Uh, all right, Vanessa, what are your thoughts on the 2020 Napa Vintages coming out? He saw the first new one from Trader Joe's this week. My new friend Russell said the smoke taint has affected a significant amount of wine. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, so we had big fires here in 2020 vintage so the year that the 20 that in that count you know because we harvest like if you see the vintage on the bottle that's the year that the grapes are harvested and we had some pretty big fires here so there are many people who didn't make wine that year um so smoke taint is a um it's something that can affect grapes and it's it's understood to a point but not understood yet i mean people have devoted you know there's like huge research institutes devoted to trying to understand the the impact on grapes because over time so basically you know grapevines breathe right they they transpire so if you've got a vine hanging out there and hasn't been harvested and you have big fires and again like you could have a small fire maybe it blows through it's nothing but like in that but we had smoke hanging like for weeks basically you know mm -hmm. it was it was and i was here it was really bad mm -hmm. um so so some people are like i'm not gonna risk it i'm just not gonna make any wine and some people are like i made wine it tastes great you know um and the truth is, you know, we can test, there are tests you can do in a laboratory to test for certain compounds to see if they're present um, that show smoke taint. But there are things that happen over time in a bottle because a, a bottle of wine continues to evolve, uh, e evolve, right? And there are chemical reactions that happen over time. So that's what we don't know. So what I will say is like, you can buy a bottle of 2020 and any reputable producer, if they're at all unsure, they will not release it. They, they just won't make it, right? So they put out a 2020, they, they think it's great, they tested it. What we don't know is over time, what's gonna happen. Oh, okay, cool. You know, even, yeah, so, so yeah, so you can find some great wines from 2020. We just, we just long-term don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know a lot of people were worried about that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll see, you know, we were really lucky last year. We didn't have any, but um, you know, heading, he we're, we're like heading into fire season, sort of in fire season now. So yeah. we just have to hope the best, yeah. Let's hope, yes, please. Mm -hmm. 2020, uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't enough to deal with. Uh, and then uh, you guys had the worst like fire season ever. Oh, just, yeah. I mean, it was like people have their COVID masks on like harvesting in the middle of like smoke clouds. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The next vintage comes along shortly after. So True. we move on. I, you know, move I on wanna come up. I really wanna come up for um harvest this year. I really yeah. do. You should. It's gonna be it's gonna be I think a early, like an earlier start. So probably September for red wines, which is on the That's earlier really side. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's common very common for white wines. 
to be picked even starting in August. Um, but we're probably going to be like early, early ish in September for reds is what I'm hearing. I'm not a winemaker, but wow. talking to my winemaker friends, that's what I hear about this year. Wow. Why so early weather? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just the nature, the nature of this year. So. Just, okay. So it's just mm -hmm. like, is it cause it's hot? Yeah. So, um, another sort of cool thing about vines is so so yes like the vintage is always impacted by heat heat light you know mm -hmm. um at, over a certain temperature like when it gets really hot vines actually shut down so they're smart so it's funny if you have a couple of really really hot days like we had a just like two weeks ago or something like that we had a couple days that were like 106 mm -hmm. in a row vines will just be like nope and they close like they close their their leaves and they're just like i'm gonna just actually freeze so what's weird is if you have a lot of like long steady sort of moderate heat it can accelerate things but if you have actually like a, a really really hot spell it'll actually slow things down because they just sort of stop in their tracks oh they're, they're really smart like vines are so cool wow we're talking so much about vines today. I love it. I love it. Well, we we had an old vine wine, so we had we to, did we had to. There was Part there was, the um, oh I see. Ryan said wine encyclopedia says wine in Georgia dates back eight thousand years. Oh, and then Robert said, uh, Georgia and Armenia wine making history that goes back about eight thousand years. Vine age in Georgia usually ranges between twenty and one hundred twenty years old. Okay. Okay. There you go. So. Some old ones there. So cool. So eight thousand years. Eight thousand years that's, old. That's crazy, right? When that's, you think about it. Yeah. Wow. Do, do you think? <laughs> do, did you see the? Did you see those pictures of the 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 that that telescope took of like the, the okay? No, Robert and I literally right before we got on, we're like, we need to look up those photos because we haven't looked at them yet. No. Oh come on! I know. <laughs> I haven't. Because I was going to ask, do you think they were making wine on these other planets? Great question. Why not? I th I think so. How see that that that's going to be the the next uh, frontier tasting wine in another galaxy. <laughs> yeah, tasting wine and drinking martinis in other galaxies. In uh yeah, in another galaxy. Mm -hmm. I'm that's sure. A, yeah, who knows. I bet they're doing it somewhere on another galaxy right now. They're 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 doing their form of Zoom or whatever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> their version of Wine One. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's what they're doing. I assume, uh -huh. right? Yeah, I think that so. seems really logical to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's too, once you see the picture, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, there's too many little stars here for there not to be. Yeah millions of other wine galaxies <laughs> yeah yeah okay well maybe yeah. you know this year's georgia next year i'll i'll see if i can find a trip to yeah outer space wine. yeah exactly yeah. see yeah and then yeah. we'll do a wine wednesday and we'll talk about it <laughs> that's what we do that's what we do <laughs> oh gosh this was great mm -hmm. um this was awesome Good to be back thank so you good. yeah this was really a blast uh so yeah i think we should do another one of these when you come back from georgia and and do it. you know we can you can report back and we can see what's uh what georgian wine is like yeah okay it'll be fun yeah we will yeah. do it again yes dd we will do it again don't you worry because yes. it got... was not for lack of trying we, 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 we really try. we tried, we to tried so many times like yeah. like, <laughs> like we go back and forth and be like this is it no i'm gone no i'm out of town no busy no and then yeah this was it this was the date this is it this is it i'm glad we did it proud of um, us cool uh thank you again so much this was so My fun pleasure. it's so good to see you and Please yeah thanks you. for everyone who you know showed up tonight and hopefully yeah. you had a little glass of something with us thanks guys thanks for watching everybody uh i'll be back live again at some point i don't know <laughs> some point in the future i'll let you know um thanks everybody i hope you have a great wine wednesday cheers vanessa thank you cheers so much. max all Yay. right well
Yay. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> We did it. Wine Wednesday, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go eat my barbecue chicken because barbecue goes with these old vines. Um, so just a blast having Vanessa back. I am so happy that she was back. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, what are you all drinking tonight, by the way? I hope you're drinking something good. And I hope um, you enjoyed the return of Vanessa. Right? Pretty great. Pretty great. Uh, thank you, guys. I'm going to go. Cheers to you all. Bye, everybody. Oh, and don't worry. I, I, I banned the trolls. Don't, don't you worry. Don't, don't, don't you worry one bit. I took control of the trolls. I just didn't want to acknowledge it. But... <laughs> you know, I did not want to acknowledge it. No. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. To, uh, oh, thanks, Denise, for the uh, the super chat. I love it. Hey, Robert, thanks for being here. Good to see you. Uh, I will see you all really soon. Thanks, guys. Good night. <laughs>